How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now, I got some more tech news for you guys if you're pumped up for that. We have some new Ryzen 3600 leaked benchmarks which we're going to see a lot more in the upcoming few days till the launch. We have some news from Bill Gates talking about Android and Apple cancelling a camera. So all of that in today's tech news video. So jumping into our first news topic, yesterday a large number of websites like Discord was down for more than an hour because Cloudflare, that's one of the largest website hosting platforms and security services, was partially down. Now, Cloudflare did say that they are working on a possible root leak affecting some of its network. And who might be responsible for this possible root leak? Well, it was Noctian and Verizon that was the culprits. So a statement from Cloudflare kind of explained why this happened. They said earlier today, a widespread BGP routing leak affected a number of internet services and a portion of traffic to Cloudflare. All of Cloudflare systems continue to run normally, but traffic wasn't getting to us for a portion of our domains. Now the issue had already been fixed. It was only for a bit more than an hour, so it's not too big of a deal. Uh, but yeah, Cloudflare CEO wasn't too happy with those two companies, bashing them on Twitter, saying that it's absurd that Verizon could blindly accept Roots without a basic of filters. But now, uh, did you guys notice it? I know one of you guys in Discord did actually message that Discord was down for around an hour. I didn't even notice any of the website that I went to was still running. So maybe it wasn't that big, but yeah, let me know if you guys noticed that any of the websites you went to was actually down. Then moving on, recently Bill Gates had an interview with the venture capital firm of Village Global where Gates said that Microsoft's greatest mistake was missing the opportunity to build the largest mobile platform and instead it's a Google's mobile OS that's turned into a juggernaut. Now, Bill Gates does say that he is partly to blame for this because of mismanagement, which did cause Microsoft to kind of lose out on $400 billion, which he thinks Android is worth, which kind of makes sense because it has over 2 billion users. Now, Bill Gates also said that the software industry is a winner-takes-all market, which I kind of agree, but also don't agree on. I do think that there's still space for more competitors, especially in the mobile industry, even though it's going to be really hard. So Android has over 2 billion users and is by far the largest. Apple kind of there, but also not close really. But I do think that Huawei's Oak OS, which they're working on, could be competition to Android. But that of course depends on how they implement it and if not only their phones will be able to use the, the software but also possibly other phones in probably mostly China accepting that as well. If that happens then that could be a competitor to Android, possibly actually force Google to improve Android because Android isn't really that great. I mean just currently compared it to iOS iOS is so much more resource friendly. It's not as resource intensive or RAM intensive as Android, which you need eight gigs of RAM in a phone nowadays. This is stupid. So even though Microsoft did lose out on that and they're not really gonna work on another mobile OS, uh, I do think that there's a market for another competitor. But now speaking of Apple, Apple has reportedly canceled a $21 million deal with Nanoco that would have made their new 2019 iPhone's camera benefit from their quantum dot technology that enables a more precise control of light. This would have given them improved quality compared to their competitors who still currently uses silicon. However, Apple most likely does have a plan to this. Maybe they've got something a bit better because they do kind of need to improve their camera game. Even though their phones are good, I'm not too crazy about the iPhones. Their cameras are really good. But with all of the leaked specs and the rumors we're getting on the new Note 10, the Pixel 4, Apple will need to step up its game and still have that edge over a lot of the other companies. But then again, even if Apple goes back and uses a 10 year old camera, people will still most likely buy their phones because it's the Apple, it's the Apples. 
So yeah. Now then getting into our final topic, I just quickly want to get something. I just want to put this one here as well because we, we might need that. Uh, but on Friday, we talked about the Elite Benchmarks on the Ryzen 9 3900X and how it performs. But again, we, we needed that for that one as well. But today we have new benchmarks on the Ryzen 5 3600. Now the official release date is still around two weeks away, so keep this one a close for this article. So the new benchmarks published on the website Al Chapuzas Informatico, I do hope I pronounced that correctly, showed the new $200 budget Ryzen chip with 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a boost clock of 4.6 GHz, performing quite well compared to the Ryzen 2700 and then also the 9700K. Now, however, all of these benchmarks was still running on an X470 motherboard, so we didn't have any proper BIOS for that or anything. They were still running on the previous ones, so there was a lot of latency compared to the other complete systems. So once the new X570 boards are released and we do have official BIOS versions for X470, then we will see an increase in performance. But yeah, here we go. So now getting into the benchmark, the CPU was tested on an X470 and Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi with 16 gigs of G-Skills Cloudflare X DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz and an RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition. Now in all of the multi-core synthetic benchmarks, the 3600 outperformed the 9700X but a full short against of course the 2700X that does have have two more cores and four more threads. Now also they didn't state what the clock speeds was for all of the CPUs. Now we can speculate that the 3600 is running at that 4.2 gigahertz boost clock but what about the others? They didn't say how fast the 9700K was, they didn't say how fast the 2700X was and if I look at some of the, the Cinebench benchmarks their benchmarks does look to be a bit slower, especially for the 2700X. So again, this one is involved. Now that was for the multi-core benchmarks. What about the single threaded tests? So here it's pretty much the opposite way around where the 3600 beat the 2700X, but of course losing to Intel's 9700K, which is understandable. Now, as for a gaming benchmarks, here it was more of a push, a pull between the 3600 and the 2700X for second place. The 9900K, of course, was at the top. No surprise really there. But strangely enough, they didn't show the results for CPUs like the 8700K or the 9700K, which they did have in the synthetic benchmarks, but instead they had the 6700K, which it's kind of dumb. I'm not too sure why they did that. Maybe for price comparison, but then you'd rather go for something like the i5s. Um, but then you'll most likely go for something like the i5 9500 or, or something like that. But now, if we do just take these benchmarks like and how they are, the $200 3600 does punch outside it, its weight class quite a bit, performing really well. And now, if these benchmarks are true, then the new 3600, I believe, is definitely going to be the new most popular gaming CPU for, for budget-friendly for budget-friendly systems. But now, the article did also mention power draw and then also temperatures on the new CPU. So, the 65 watt TDP CPU with the included Rafe style cooler ranged around 40 degrees on idle up to 65 degrees in the load test, which still looks to be a bit low, I think, especially if it is just the uh, air cooled stock cooler, even though they do perform quite well. But also, it did use around 55 watts less than a 2600 on the overall system a draw which does also sound a bit low to me even though they're both 65 watt chips uh, it shouldn't be 55 watts lower in my opinion so there might actually be some room for a more power delivery there which will also increase the performance but again could be the BIOS that's not delivering that power 
it might just be the benchmark being really limited, but we'll see later on once we get closer to that official launch date. This is just some leaked benchmarks. So that's pretty much it for our tech news video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. I do hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.